How are we going to continue making this documentary without spoiling anything? I don't know. Well, people know now if they've hopefully not watching this episode before they finish Act One. Mm -hmm. You you really shouldn't watch this episode. <laughs> sure you shoot that now? Hi, I'm Tim Schaefer. Please don't watch this episode until you've finished Act One of Broken Age. No, I mean, I feel like it's tense about the money because we want it to do well, um, because I have big plans for Act Two, and if we don't do well, Justin's gonna be like, look, look, we can't, we gotta, you know, because basically just spending our own money from here on out, and probably like a few months back. So if no one buys the game tomorrow, maybe Act Two will be much smaller than Act One. Mm -hmm. I just hope, I hope one person buys it. No one buys it. That's gonna be really awkward. But I guess that's a good clear. I can say that to the backers. Look, nobody bought it except for you guys. I'm sorry, but it serves me right for investing your own money in the game. I should just play with their money. We are launching Reds tomorrow. Crazy time. All of our backers. Yes. yes. Thank you to our team for working so hard. Uh, we are going to the backers tomorrow and the uh, rest of the general population, future backers, if you will, uh, on the 28th. Uh, the game is up. Pre-orders are up. Woohoo! Yeah. All right, next game. I will send the press release. One of the reviewers said he um, didn't go to bed. <laughs> he finished the game last night. Finished it last night? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I sent the codes at like... Did he say how long? 4 or 5 p.m. Oh, right. So, I mean, I guess there's time. Yeah. But yeah, he just didn't stop. It's kind of awesome. Man, that's weird. People are playing Broken Age. There's seven people watching him, and I'm one of them. I don't want them to know this is what I do. I've never done this before. We've never been able to do this before. We didn't have live streams back after Grim Fandango. Uh, people are already posting screenshots. <laughs> I'm still waiting for... I, I'm just curious who's going to be the first one to like, post a review. Yeah, right. Tim, did you hear that? What? Digital Trends posted an article, Why We're Breaking the Broken Age em Embargo. <laughs> and how they're going to review it. Well, why, what embargo are they breaking? Their review embargo. They're going to put a review up. They're just announcing they're going to break it? Yeah. Why? Because they paid for the game and they're a backer, and they're getting it because they paid for it. But we... But they're not, they're in the bank. They haven't reviewed it yet, but Digital Trends, I know, they emailed me about this yesterday, and that's what I told them. Technically, no one signed anything, so there's nothing we can actually do about yeah. it. Yeah. What do you think about embargo. that? I'm sorry? I, mean, I don't think you there's anything we can do about it. Outlets, we have something in writing. No, we don't. Embargoes are, they're not really enforceable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the whole it's thing just, is, It's yeah. a professional. I know, I know. It's a courtesy, a professional courtesy, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe he didn't agree to anything, but he knows he's being a shit. It's like, um... People don't realize that everything's embargoed. Like every review they read has usually been embargoed because your game's coming out and people want the press for their game to come out on launch day or around that time when people can buy it. Because um, if it comes out before, then all that energy, people see that article, they can't go buy it. So anyway, you want, your, you want to time your press to that day. But different reporters can come in at different times and they're like, hey, I want to, you know, it, just because this guy came in a week early, does that mean his review gets to go up a week earlier? So you say it's embargoed so that all the press has a fair chance of getting their story, it's not getting scooped or whatever. And they also have time with the build to do a thoughtful build instead of racing to like getting it out early. But we were going out to backers, so 90,000 people had the build, and I think most of the regular backers are like, okay, yeah, this is private information, I won't spoil it for people who can't buy it yet. Um, 
and the press understood it, but there's kind of this gray area of people between backers and press, like kind of like a, a, a blogger, you know, who's a backer, and who's like, hey, I paid money for this. This guy's amazed to see consumers suggest the press should stick their heads in the sand because Double Fine asked them too nicely. For the evening crowd, the broken age embargo is a bit of a joke. <laughs> Did anyone else contact you from an actual news outlet? IGN. Do they want to review or just do what they say? Yeah, it was just yesterday. He's like, I just want to be clear on what's expected. And he says, like, I feel like there's so many people that are going to be having the game. Um, like, if other people start running their reviews, we're going to feel like we're going to have to run ours. That's basically all he said. Why don't we just let the people who are not being jerks about it break the embargo? <laughs> we can't do that. And that would scoop all the people who are being jerks about it. Yeah. But we can't do that? <laughs> I don't know how to uh, enforce that. Just pick the ones that are being nice about it and just tell them they can. Then one day later, tell everyone else they can. <laughs> yeah, I think that only serves to inflate the issue because then uh, they think the embargo is still there and that it's being broken and then it's a mess. So yeah. I think we have to. It's kind of a mess, though, I think now. Well, then, if, it's that, if that's the case, then I think we have to talk about lifting it. And then I'm fine, like, I've been saving the list of people I've emailed, um, all this review stuff, so it would really be like a two-second Kickstarter update and emailing them all if you want to just totally lift things. Um, maybe we could just open it in a couple of days. I don't know. Just sit on it for a second and see. Yeah. Okay. God, that embargo's a disaster. And so, because like one or two people were threatening to like break it, that all of a sudden made everybody else who wasn't breaking it like a chump. And I didn't want them, you know, to feel. So we just like, look, okay, we take back our request that no one's go ahead, post all the reviews and stuff. So a bunch of our reviews went up when people couldn't buy the game. So that was kind of it took away a lot of our like our press hit for the launch day, which was too bad. But it seemed like it was it, we just couldn't. It was out of control. There were just like you know ninety thousand people. Even if like um, eighty thousand of them are totally like, yeah, it's cool. Like if just a few, just one or two breaks it, and the whole thing just falls apart. <clears throat> All our backers are so cool, but the backers who are in the press feel a little differently. They feel they have the option to not be cool. It's an awkward situation. Next time we wouldn't, I think, actually have private forums for that reason. I mean, I feel in the end, I just don't, I just don't want to have this fight anymore about private stuff. At all. It just puts, I mean, being in this antag antagonistic relationship with the press is just not comfortable because you, you need them and they're usually really good friends of ours. So just getting mad at them one by one for breaking the faith of the backer agreement is annoying. You know, about one third of, our, of all the articles that are written about Broken Age were about the embargo. Um, and then another third were about us going from early access and changing it to a regular release. And then one third were about the game. Yeah. So, if we're saying backer beta is the 14th and public release is the 28th, that would give the press builds like the 12th or something and embargo them. Um, so, this, this is an interesting one because I think this is the next one that could lead to a PR blow up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was not in favor of the embargo. But, Pre-orders are there, like you said, so um, people can still at least go and get the pre-order. So the pre-orders are, uh, they're less than we expected. They are, um, we were hoping that they'd come in higher. If I had to project off the pre-orders we've received so far, um, that would be a kind of bleak outlook as far as um, how many we'd actually sell, you know, for the lifetime of, of, of Broken Age. but. Um, I'm basing everything off if, uh, of different historicals for other games that Tim has sold, and none of those have had this kind of Kickstarter story. So this is definitely unique. Um, I don't think it's time for us to panic right now, but it puts a whole lot more emphasis um, and importance on uh, January 28th when, when it comes out for real. So I think it will do well in the long run, but it's just like, how long is that run? Um, the other piece that I, I think is, is kind of the silver lining on all this is the reviews are coming in really good. Um, you know, I, I foresee that the game's gonna have a great word of mouth buzz. Uh, most of Tim's games actually do. 
and uh, they have a, it has a very long tail. Their, their game is what people call evergreen games. They keep on selling at a, a certain, uh, certain level, and they just keep on, which keeps on accumulating over the years, um, which is, is different than most games. Most games have that huge spike, that hump, that six weeks hump. Uh, Tim's, Tim's are different. Uh, so that's, that's one good thing to take into account um, with all the good reviews and all the, the social media and the good word of mouth we're having. You know, it's like we can't get to a place where we can sell this game quick enough because that's where we're really going to be able to see and project um, you know, what, what the success of the game is going to be. So the other thing Tim was talking about is just that now that we have to move the embargo up and reviews are out now, um, the idea of flipping the Switch on Steam earlier. Releasing oh. it a week, a week early. Before like next Tuesday. Games. Yeah, before the Twitch. Oh, really? Really? Honestly? Sure, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just people going to get a game that's going to crash on, like, you know. Well, that's the question. I mean, and there is, I mean there's, a, there's a legitimate business reason to think about it just because it's out there. It's getting a lot of attention right now, and there's a lot of press I'm going to do next week. Oh. And it'd be nice if people, I mean, they can go and pre purchase it, but they can't buy it. It'd be nice to have a story about the game being pushed forward. <laughs> I voiced my concern about this plan. Um, I mean, technically, it doesn't make, like, just looking at how long things take just doesn't really make all that much sense. Um, and, you know, I explained it like that, that we can certainly do it, but it would be very uh, unadvisable, especially considering that at the time when that was first proposed, we still had big problems with crashes and people not being able to play the game at all. And, like, so that was my main worry that, you know, we were still, like, trying to fight really, really big issues. And I did, so certainly didn't feel like I was ready um, to, to ship it then. But I think now, it, it basically, I don't think anything will have changed. We kind of release it on the planned day we had initially, just because technically, time-wise, it doesn't really work out any other way anyway. So, But it was good. So now the official reviews, now they are rolling, it, rolling in. The great thing is that they're all really great. I mean, that Polygon one was 9 out of 10, which is great. Um, I mean, I would give it a 10, but... I'll accept a nine. Broken Age may be unfinished, but it's also delightful, beautiful, utterly charming, and you really should play it right this second. No, it's cool. It's awesome that it's kind of like, that we all made an awesome thing now. <laughs> like, this is the cool part, you know? Like, we made this awesome thing, and now it's out in the world for everybody to uh, look at. Um, yeah, I guess. Okay. How many reviews are there now? But it feels good, and, and people seem to be really responding to the game. Um, the reviews have been have been really good, and um, even comments about animation, which you you don't get that that often. It seems like in games a lot of times, maybe a couple of times. But there's been several of the reviews that have mentioned the animation that they really that they really liked it, and um, and that's that's rewarding. So yeah. Yeah, I saw nine today. That was nice. So, but you know, I, I actually, what I, I'm kind of bad. I don't really. I try not to read a lot of the reviews um, because the bad ones do kind of make me put me down. You know, they kind of, you know, when you're kind of on this high that you've released it, and then suddenly, even though if there's like six good reviews and then one bad one, that bad one kind of um, affects me. So, um, so I try not to read a lot of the comments until a little bit later on. Broken Age gets by on the strength of its storytelling. The puzzles aren't particularly complex or compelling, with the exception of a certain vomiting tree, and serve as a reason to explore the environments. I can't say I recommend this to people who don't already have a fondness for this genre. Compared to modern entries in the genre like those from Telltale Games, it may seem a little simple or even boring. This is actually just new posts for new posts today. Oh, God, I want, the guy who wants a refund, it's like, uh, he's a jerk. I'm just going to say it, he's a jerk. Thanks for backing, jerk. You know, it's unrealistic to expect that you will be able to please everybody, obviously. Um, unfortunately, very often the people who are the most dissatisfied are also the loudest ones, you know, which, which can be difficult, especially if you're pouring a lot of effort, a lot of work, and a lot of your, like, like, soul is the wrong word, but, like, a lot of your personal kind of effort into the game, like, to see somebody come in and, like, just completely smash it. Uh, I did the mistake, and I should know better after so many years in games, that I think I went to Kotaku, where they had an article about the retro mode, and, like, one of the comments, and I should, you should never do that if you work in games, never read the comments. Actually, generally, don't read any internet comments. I scrolled down, and somebody was like, this just looks shit. Like, this is, you know, 
here, here's a comparison to hand-painted hand -painted sprites versus like downrest. It's like, yes, obviously. And then backers immediately also jumped in while they just, you know, put it in as a little add-on and stuff like that. And still the person was uh, not satisfied with that at all. And then he's like, well, if you were a backer, you would see that, you know, they just put it in during the weekend and it's a side, like, little side project. I'm not a backer, but this is shit. I'm not going to buy it. I guess. Having said all that, overall, I think people are very happy. I've got a lot, we got a lot of tweets from people who are super happy with the project, and uh, on the forums, people are very happy. And, you know, we saw some playthroughs of people like really, really enjoying the game, and like you know, it's good to see the super positive reactions of somebody just like laughing about all the jokes in the game and just generally like finding the game very beautiful and stuff like that. So it's it's good. Fuck yeah. I don't know which one. Uh, what do I pick? Small change here. This is the Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> This must be where Merrick sleeps. So he he uh, he keeps the costume on <laughs> while he sleeps. That's funny. Man, this is a genius game. Genius story. Wait. I'm super happy that no one seems to have guessed the big spoiler at the end of it. I really thought that was going to get out. And actually, long ago on the forums, one guy guessed it, and no one followed up on it. Like, no one, he just said his little thing, hey, what if this is the case? And then no one answered him. And I was like, oh, man, I feel, oh, God, I, you know, I hate that guy for guessing it, but I'm really, you know, it's, it's worth something. We should send him some chocolate. Um, but everyone else has just had the exact, like, experience that I was hoping for, which is that they were really like, oh, my God, I didn't see that coming, that's crazy. And Shay, Shay was controlling Mog Chathra. Uh, Shay? What the heck? What the heck? That's Shay. That they all seem to really be enjoy the ending. And um, so I'm really happy with that. And I'm really happy with um, people's response to like the story and the characters. And a lot of people, I think, will actually appreciate the difficulty level in the um, game once we get um, out of the most hardcore part of the audience. I think they'll like that, that it flows more as opposed to hitting a series of really, really hard stops for most people. It does seem like people are hoping that the second Act gets harder. I mean, you could tell I already anticipated that. After playtesting the first part, I was like, I think this is a little easy, but I think rather than just throwing a monkey wrench, monkey Allen joke, in there, uh, really focusing on Act 2 and making Act 2 a little more, um, instead of things being one step, having to be a little more complex. So, way ahead of him. Way ahead of him on that. You know, I think it's yeah, it's interesting. Like, the, I don't, I don't think I read anything that I would felt was unfair, and it all seemed pretty balanced. Uh, there were, I think, um, you know, there's some comments about length, maybe a couple of them, um, and that's kind of difficult because it, you know, I mean, I, this was the same on stacking. You know, you can you can burn through an adventure game, um, and and that can really shorten your play experience. But I don't know if that's a the best way to evaluate that particular game. You know, it's not a game that has a mechanic that just like is endlessly playable. So it's a little, I don't know. You know, it's just it's just something that happens with adventure games that that uh, I th I've seen that come up. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but um, uh, I guess I don't know what to say about it. You know, but I think you know, and some of the other stuff is stuff that we discussed early on that I've seen like you know the lack of a verb coin or verb page, and I I, I think that's just a choice, Tim, and I think the correct choice Tim made early on. You know, I don't. I don't think there. There's probably people who played Machinarium that also was like, "This would be better if I could have a look and examine and oh, yeah. point. But I don't really feel like the experience needed it in any way, and I don't really feel like Broken Age needs it in any way, and I don't really feel like that's where we're gonna get puzzle depth, mechanical depth, anyways. So, I, you know, I mean, I wouldn't oppose it if someone really, really like if we had started the game, we really, really wanted to take that approach. But I just like the idea of, of you know, I think Tim's initial. Um, vision for the game would be like, well, what if adventure games just kept going and we just were keeping on working and we, we wouldn't keep making the exact same thing. We'd try and mess with the formula and advance things. And I think that's what we tried to do with the visuals. We didn't want to make retro visuals, right? We wanted to make visuals that were 2D and charming, but also took advantage of modern methodologies and technologies and resolutions and 
um, I think the approach to the gameplay is consistent with that. Yeah. And that's just a choice, you know, and some people will want that exact Monkey Island moment, and some people are like, thank God the puzzles aren't that confusing, you know? <laughs> you know, it's hard, it's hard to get the right. So what I would like to do is next week, uh, since Bagel's out for two weeks, and I wanted him to come out at this time so we could kick off Act Two. So I would like to kind of, um, at the very least, uh, we'll see who has time, but at the very least Bagel and Levi and myself to, to start concept jamming next week on early Act Two stuff. And um, Tim hasn't delivered the final design or dialogue yet, but uh, I already know some of the high level stuff and then hopefully we can get him to kind of I can kind of like mention all that and he can kind of correct me where he's changed things and just get us going. So there's, there's definitely a new, at least one new area that has no presence at all in the current act that we have to design. And we had some very early stuff on it from before, but we haven't thought about it in 18 months. So I'll probably start there. So are these the only dudes that we, this is like pretty much all we have to worry, really worry about, right? I mean, those, those only new things? This is the new stuff we know about for sure. Yeah. So I thought we'd start there. Uh, okay. So. Uh, the thing that Tim, like, he's going to be here after lunch, so we can ask him some more questions, but the thing that we know for sure th is that uh, we, we need a Monsterlands area. Uh, it's probably also a good chance for us to think about where we want to go with, you know, as we're developing them, if we want to go any place different with Merrick. There's another concept thing we could think about, is we talked about, okay, the, what Alex's ship is. And originally Tim kept saying, well, it's, it'll just be a copy of Mog Chothra to save time. And I was saying, well, that's not really going to save us much time. I mean, it'll save a week or so of production time, but... That's gotta be like older version. Right, like, it, yeah. and it's been buried, it's not gonna look the yeah. same. Yeah, and yeah, I'd love yeah. to see it like a previous generation, because when we were starting yeah. to draw like, I don't, I don't know, maybe like some of these older ones or whatever, like remember we had all those ideas like, oh, it's got diamond shape eyes, and instead of hex eyes, and it's a little... <laughs> yeah, just like changes to the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like 400 <laughs> years, and like, oh yeah, but then it came around to hexes again, yeah. and then it went away for another We added years. two sides to our yeah. windows. That's awesome. That's always the best. Like in Star Wars, you're like, well, it's R2-D2, but it's a fucking red R2-D2, and it's like different. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's awesome. <laughs> I always love that. Well, plus, it's, it would be cool, too. Like, it, this one doesn't have, it's been buried for, for however long, so it doesn't have to look as purely organic. You know, like, we're not, we're no longer trying to make people believe it's just a monster. So being able to see some combination of the mechanical yeah, the, and the monster. Yeah, like, the outer hull is just, like, ripped away in most of the parts. And... But it would still be the same, like, rig kind of setup, right? I mean, it could be whatever yeah. we want. Mm -hmm. Bog yeah, chakra. Yeah, ship. Bog chakra. Bog, uh, bog. I like that one. <laughs> I like bog. Just Bob. Bob Mothra. Bob Chathra. <laughs> Bob Chathra. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that would be fucking sweet. All right, should we call Scott and get pumped? No. no. Yeah! <laughs> Look! Woo! <laughs> Hey, bro, get us pumped up! Get us pumped up! We're all like, boo, drawing is stupid. Is he still in bed? I'm chilling on my couch. Why are you chilling on your couch? I'm chilling on my couch. Oh, man. I, I, was, just, I was just watching uh, Triplets of Belleville. Yeah. Oh, sweet, dude. What are, you guys, what are you guys doing? We're doing an art jam, dude. We're doing an art jam, and nobody's pumped up, and like, like <laughs> nobody fucking is as psyched as you. You gotta get, get us psyched. You know, when you and Peter are here, you guys are like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so come on, bro. Do, go for it. We need some art cheerleading. Let's get psyched, man. What are you guys okay. working on? Tell me about it. <laughs> All right, check it out. What are you doing? Monsterlands. Uh oh, look who it is. Oh, hey, what man. tall man? All right, cool. Scott! Oh, yeah, cool. we're all getting bumped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Who are you talking this to? This one must Scott. Oh, That's Scott Campbell. Hi, Yay. Scott Campbell. Hey, everybody's at the art jam. I'm excited to hear about what we're gonna do because I'm. Um, because I know that we all like, this is like a, not, not really trial and error, but I got pretty much trial and error. Close to the end, everything started working really smoothly. So, you know, it's gonna be way better for sure, you know, because we learned so much. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm actually really excited to see how we take all the things that we learned, trial and error wise, and uh, try to get it, you know, see what happens with the next, how organized we are, what we learned. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Those are the new things. Monster and Those are the lands on the gate. And there's only the pollution inside, like, the kingdom. <clears throat> Don't film his armpits. That's oh, God, are they like... Oh, God! That's how <laughs> <laughs> <It's> horrible. This is our most horrible zone. Oh, wow, yeah. Hey, bro. You're hard Aren't you glad you're not here right now? Okay. And it would be nice to get the main characters in different outfits. 
just to make the game feel where the most they, different. Than like, would she put on like so a space I think suit? her with a radiation yeah. suit, and I don't know necessarily if he <laughs> had. I can't think of a. I haven't thought of a Kate puzzle. Chris. What? <laughs> we should well, do a transgender thing where he starts dressing like a girl because he gets the maiden, leftover Maiden's Feast outfits and yeah. she uh, dresses like a boy. I mean, he could put on a druid cloak or he could, but he could put on a, um, a preener outfit. Remember we had those part where she had to mm -hmm. masquerade as a preener for a while? He could possibly have to do that. I just think it'd be more fun for the player to have him look really different. He needs like a traveling cloak or something. Piece together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Other than doing some concept artwork, nobody has really started working on the second act anyway. So a lot of, a lot of us are still working on bug fixes for this release, um, and it's you know it's an incremental update to the backer release. So I, you know I'm really optimistic that with all the like minor fixes we put in, uh, it will be a pretty solid solid release. Um, we are investigating an issue with the trackpad on Linux uh, for laptops with trackpads. There's a little issue there, so a little <laughs> oversensitive, you might say. You make a funny. change and like, oh, it works on Windows, then you go over to Linux. Oh gosh, it's probably what sure. the hell is going on? It was it was good to have a beta at least for sure to kind of find a lot of issues and you know, a lot of things we ran into were we were not unprepared for, but we didn't expect like a lot of way more compatibility issues than than we expected, for example, and you know. That's why I have those guys here. Like we had a lot of issues with compatibility, so we ordered a lot of graphics cards just to kind of trying to reproduce some of the issues that users were running into. Well, this is what compatibility is all about: finding really, really old hardware and putting in your machine and see what happens. Um, you know, where here in a studio we didn't really have any problems running the game, and like our external QA partner didn't have any problem running the game. But then as soon as we, you know, we launched it on um, for you know on the day for the backers. Like immediately, people came back. Oh, the game is crashing or sitting on a black screen and stuff like that. And it's always like crap. We would have if we would not have done it like that. We would have eventually run into these issues. So you know, on the 28th, um, we would have released the game and people would have big problems with it. And like, while crashes are not great, but at least acceptable during a beta. Like once the game is out, yeah, you know, become way less acceptable. Oh, this uh, VJ outfit. Haven't seen that in a while. Oh, that's even still possible. I had, I think, two crashes on Windows 98. So just, I'm even surprised that you managed to download Steam on that machine, I guess. And uh, but yeah, unfortunately, the game does not run on Windows 98, and I don't think it's part of the minimum requirement. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was certainly very funny and surprising for sure. Yeah. Do you think the worst of the compatibility problems is probably the download? I knock on the graphics card right here. <laughs> and, but right now we're interested in crashes and. Uh, blockers and people whose progress is lost, saves getting corrupted, stuff like that. But now it's like the forum is the bug list pretty much because there's so much coming in. So before I was in, you know, I was looking through our bugs and now I'm looking through just all of these bugs. Now they're the testers, they're reporting the bugs to us. We're, we're merely the conduit through which you know, we get the, the bugs to developers. And it's nice, I think, for the team to have an overview over how the overall progress is going. So it's nice to be able to see, like, look at the child and be like, oh, we are constantly going down. And there are spikes, like the spike over there is when Tim played through the game twice and submitted about 15 pages of uh, bug fixes. It really is effectively got to be done this week. So if there's anything that I really care about getting fixed, I have to make a big stink about it right now. But making big stinks is what I'm all about. The camera's here, and then when I click, the uh, camera moves. So annoying. Fellas, first step makes the camera twitch. At the end of the game, which is a million bugs of things flashing or twitching for one frame. It drives me nuts. When she gives him the cupcake, I swear the cupcake appears floating in the air for one frame. Yep. The average player can't say what happened but they'll just get this weird twitchy feeling when they're playing the game of like, ah, oh, something is just, it's like a just feeling of it not being polished. 
But I can see, like, okay, that camera was wrong for one frame. Sometimes I can't even tell if I saw a flash. Like, at the end of that cutscene, I swear I saw a flash. I'm trying to fix everything. Can't fix everything. The mouse sensitivity is weird, though. Split it with you? Deal. Um, myself, I've been... I got a couple of small little um, crashes in the UI, stuff like that that I've been fixing, and... Uh, but, yeah, mostly, like... These are my bugs right now. They all fit on one span of the window, so it's like, things are going well. How many um, bugs are left in Bugzilla? Is it really a sizable amount still? Uh, they just keep coming. So it's... Yeah, I mean, these are all, they're all, they're, most of them are minor. Who is making all these bugs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just minor, but we know the game's coming out again, you know, as a final, so, so we just wanted to make it as good as we can. We're going to be, most of us will roll off on Mon Monday um, onto other things for a little while. And then okay, come back. great. We're going to have to assess at the end of the month. We've got to figure out how much work is ready to just start doing. <laughs> it's just about, yeah, that's right, sorry. No, uh, so yeah, so d which, you know, we, some of the script is written, but there's still more to go. So uh, I'm not sure how much work there will be. Uh, just for the first, you know, couple weeks. So, got to keep people busy, though. We had uh, three of our animators actually go off the project now, so they've moved on to other projects. I'm leaving Broken Age because I'm moving on to another unannounced project, and they'll be the rest of the Broken Age team that's left on that project. They're going to continue on Broken Age Part Two. So, yeah, the, the nature of this new project is such that I don't see myself going over and helping out on Act 2 at all. But, you know, that's famous last word, so it could happen. I would love to at least animate something, but we are getting pretty busy around here with other things, so, um, yeah, that, that I can't see happening. But was it nice while it lasted? It was, yeah. Yeah, it was a nice... I, I wasn't really expecting to work on this project at all, so it was kind of a nice surprise. And it was something that I wanted to work on, uh, of course. Uh, you know, everyone here wanted to... Well, most people here, I can't say everyone, <laughs> but most people here wanted to, you know, at least put their hands on this because just because it made history for, for, you know, not to sound too grandiose about it, but that's what it did, right? I mean, it, there is history that was made here, and so everyone that saw that, you know, thinks, wow, yeah, that's something I at least want to put something in there. <sighs> so, okay. Goodbye, Broken Age. Goodbye, 2HB. Goodbye, Maya. Goodbye, Double Fine. <laughs> So we'll launch the game tomorrow, and hopefully if we're not all here fixing bugs, we'll get to go out and have another... We'll go back to Reds, I hope, if it's still standing. And take the team out for drinks. And before they all roll off temporarily onto other projects, I'd like to have them all hang out. Hopefully we can go have a drink and celebrate. Because it's, it's weird. It's like it was, you wish these launches were super clean, like everyone could just say, everything was great! So hopefully, I mean, time usually just washes away all the smaller things that happen, like that embargo thing and all that other stuff will be forgotten. And um, people will just remember how we didn't have mouse sensitivity when we launched, and now we do. No, that won't be the thing. Maybe. It's Elijah Wood's birthday today. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so this is a good birthday present, right? Yeah. Tim, call Elijah, wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, like you do with your mom. Hey, Elijah, just wants a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting, though. You think about Tim. Like, he's been working on this game for two years. It's now being commercially released, but so much goes into, you know, the lead-up to this that I guess I could understand. It's, it's a little anticlimactic when you, when you sit here and you just kind of, like, refresh a web page and look at numbers. Uh, interesting thing about price, though, is... You know, we can charge 29 bucks, and because I used to actually work with, you know, at a publisher uh, who did, had, you know, significant retail presence, I know the P&Ls and, like, 
literally our profit margin and the profit margin you have for like a $59 uh, box product are the same thing. Because with a box product, you gotta like, you gotta pre-print the stuff, you got the materials, you gotta ship it, you gotta store it. You know, the, the, uh, the actual store will take their cut, there'll be price protection involved. Um, there's a huge amount of expense that goes into it that like, yeah. Profit margins are equal, so we just got a lot. We got rid of a lot of waste. Oh, there it is. Hmm. All right, Justin, we're live. I see it. I am going to push the update. Do it. Do it. Um, and it's interesting because like when you get to the top position, it's probably at least a hundred, a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars, but it actually could be way north of that, and I'd have no idea because you're number one, right? So. So you could be very, very high up, um, but that would be a, that would be an amazing day for us if we could if we get in that top position. Sitting at my desk, looking at a picture of me sitting at my desk. Uh, it's 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 about an hour and twenty minutes delayed. So yeah, that'll be when uh, when we actually see something. I'll know at 11, 11.30 I'll have like the first indication. It's like the hour of celebration or reckoning or both has come. No, it's not Raz. I don't see any boobs or penises on anything. Yeah, you have to look closely. Are you guys doing a stand-up? We are doing stand-ups. Okay, are you doing stand-ups? Yeah. Whoever's left, whoever's left on the team, come on to stand-ups. We are now live for everybody in the world to buy the game on Steam. Um... That's it. That's all I had to say today. Okay, so part two. Let's take a back massage. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. That's not bad. <clears throat> yeah, it's not. It's not as good now. <laughs> <laughs> it feels nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if the good. sales aren't good, I'll immediately smash your head with this so that you won't ever feel the pain of seeing bad things. That's good. Deal. All right, we're doing this. Um, okay, let's do. Let's first just look at the. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. The top. Ten list. I'm not gonna look. I don't care. Not looking at the top ten list. I don't care. I'm not gonna look. Whoa. Oh, whoa! What? Look at that! Holy cow! You're number two on new releases. Hmm. That has no component to sales. <laughs> but top sellers, we are number four. All right. Still oh, four. Whoa! Wait. Oh, it was refreshed the new releases. It's still number four. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Fifty thousand. Yeah, Fifty thousand. Five ninety nine. That is two thousand units on Steam. Hmm? That's two thousand units on Steam. Yeah, this is good. Uh, this will this will be good. If we get over hundred K today, I think that's a it's a very good day. And I expect that um, European sales usually hit overnight. So I would expect that to double. Double today. Yeah. By the end of the day. Between now and the end of the day, probably more than double. It'll probably be like I would say like 125 to 150, which is good. So, which means that would take us over nine million for double fine lifetime revenue. Hmm. Which should be very, very cool. <laughs> um, and I actually expect, I do expect um, the trend of the game to, to stay, uh, we'll have a spike right now, but I think it'll actually be pretty steady after that. So, it's good. Okay, pretend the cameras are off now. Now pretend. Tell me what you really think. Um, it's, it is what I expected. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Exciting. Cool. Da, 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 da. Now I don't know what to look at. I guess I'll go with Design Act 2. Um, yeah. It's not earth shattering. It's not earth shattering, but it's on track to do what we needed to do, um, you know, to, to get the game finished this year. The only unfortunate part about this whole thing is that I was looking at all of our, all of our news broadcasts and basically, you know, Basically, all the news, all the exposure went out when the backers got it, like two weeks ago, when people didn't have a chance to literally, like, you know, hey, I'll I'll buy it now and uh, and I can play it now. You know, that's that's hard to, as like a, you know, value proposition for a consumer, it, it's hard to see everybody talking about this and be like, oh, I can pay for it and still not get to play it. But um, it'll hopefully come out in the wash. It was the last, uh, I think it was the very last one. It's good, yeah. 
I think we can confirm now that we chose the right code name. It didn't sound like a right code name at the time, but now look at it, red. Let's talk about stuff. We we shipped Reds last week. I don't know if you guys noticed that. We shipped a game. It was awesome. Yay, Reds! It has um, you clap just for shipping it. I mean, I think I've gotten claps out of you guys for like six weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next week we're shipping Reds. <laughs> next week it'll be two weeks since we shipped Reds. Um, it has it has made about eight hundred thousand dollars so far on the on the old Steam thing, which is fun. And um, so that. Uh, is an interesting number because it was kind of a relief in one hand because we were like, okay, there are a lot of possibilities here. One of them is that we don't make any money. No one buys the game. We can't make part two. But I think we uh, luckily, because that would have been an easy update, though. We would have called all the haters on Twitter and just been like, you guys are totally right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge a-hole and we're not going to do part two. But that doesn't seem to be... Um, a risk anymore. We are also kind of hoping, like, what if it made so much money that we did, didn't have, have to make games anymore? We could just hang around and play games all day in the office. And we also don't make Act 2. <sighs> and we also don't make Act Yeah, either way, Act 2 is like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's, that's it's not a big enough number that we're going to be immediately completely independent of publishers uh, this year, like it was a secret back of my head, kind of hope, where all my hopes are in the back of my head. Um, any other questions? Well, I was curious how many, just because I'm terrible at math, how many uh, actually units did we sell of Road Rage? It's um, just under 20,000, I think. So, so far. Let's launch it again. Can we do that? We are. Yeah, so that's just to finish the whole Reds update. We're, what the team is working on now is a lot of, instead of diving into part two, is actually platform work to get it out on more platforms, to sell it on like iOS and um, the other platforms. Um, but we would do that soon, or sooner, sooner than, than we had previously thought we were going to do it. So it would be Act One <coughs> available on, on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's talk about PR. PR. What happened to work PR last week? Uh, well, like you said, we launched Broken Age. So uh, it's been a lot yay! of yay, yay. yay! yay! Uh, so it's just been trying to keep that conversation going in the public as much as possible. Um, so those are ongoing kind of conversations. But yeah, now we're kind of shifting focus to AF stuff and getting everything ready to announce and launch that thing. Yeah. Yep, okay, that's it. Um, I think all of you and would agree with me that Chris Room was a big jerk. No. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and furthermore, we were all talking about it and decided we didn't like him. So, <laughs> I don't want that to influence you at all, but I think we need to have, Chris Remo is, is moving on to hang out with his friends, which is bad news for all his, whatever you guys are. But, um... <laughs> I'm saving that one all week. Okay, so, um... But you're still here right now, so... What happened last week in the world um, of, um... The well, community of Double Fine? An important thing for our community is that we launched Broken Age. Yeah! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, <laughs> That actually has been a cool thing to see because um, I'm seeing a lot of stuff from people who have never even necessarily played adventure games before. Um, a lot of those people. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's. it's actually been kind of awesome to see because a lot of them, you know, like with adventure game fans, people come to people come to it with, like, preconceptions and, like, all the, you know, the history that they have with the genre, and that's cool because that's the people that the game was inspired by in the first place, but it's also really cool to see all the reactions from people who don't have those preconceptions because... Uh, they'll be like, yeah, so I was playing this thing and like I didn't know what it was and it seemed pretty cool. You just kind of walk around and like cool stuff happens. And like it was actually really awesome. And that <laughs> kind of thing is surprisingly cool to read. So I've been trying to keep up with that stuff just around the web and it's been really inspiring and awesome. Um, anything else, Mr. Remo? Uh, no. Anything? I will anything miss else you with? guys a lot. I <laughs> have really loved working here a lot and I'm going to be leaving. Well, we will miss you and wish you well, and we still think you're a big jerk. In summary. I think obviously, yes. Who agrees with me about all that?
I guess he's not a monster, but he's so far away. Shay, we're meant to be far longer than forever. Who cares about Shay? I have evil deeds to do. I used to be good like everyone else in Shay, but no, I am actually evil far longer than forever. As constant as the stars, I close my eyes and I am where you are.